Have you ever wanted to treat your fish with live food, but didn't know how or where to get the food for them? Well, in this episode, we're going to show you the special trick. Hey guys, welcome back to April's Aquarium. My name's Jacob, and today we're going to be learning how to hatch brine shrimp, one of my favorite live foods to feed my fish. Historically, there's been so many ways of hatching brine shrimp, but since I've used the Zis Artemia blender or brine shrimp hatchery, I will never go back to any other method. Not only is it the easiest to harvest, but it's also the highest hatch rate that I've ever had. This blender is designed with a shape specifically intended to give circular motion to ensure none of the eggs are getting trapped and they're all being moved around to ensure an even hatch rate. While there's a few important factors that go into hatching brine shrimp, the first one we're gonna talk about today is the mineral content. The way we add minerals to our hatchery is by adding Fritz aquarium salt at a ratio of about two tablespoons, six teaspoons per one liter of water. Meaning that this whole hatchery gets a total of four tablespoons of aquarium salt. What I like to do is add the aquarium salt to some water beforehand and dissolve it before adding it to the hatchery just to ensure that it all dissolves nice and uniformly. And 12 teaspoons. Stir it around to dissolve it. And then simply add it to the hatchery. Now that we've ensured that the salt is dissolved quite nicely, we will add the bubbler back in. And now it's gonna be time to add our brine shrimp. The aquarium co-op brine shrimp eggs are our favorite to use in store and personally, as they've had the highest hatch rate that we've ever used. Coming in a very well-sealed container, and even coming with a scoop, it's very, very handy. Now for the store, we're going to feed a whole scoop of brine shrimp. That being said, for most home aquarium, that is far, far too much. If you do want to hatch this amount, that's no problem, but you'll very likely have to freeze these brine shrimp rather than feeding them all live. The access hatch at the top is extremely handy for pouring the eggs in. And then they start to get naturally mixed around. Sometimes I like to make sure that they are sunk. Just before I walk away, so that they don't get trapped at the top. And now we wait. Another very important factor that goes into the eggs hatching, not only quickly, but also well, is temperature. An ideal temperature for brine shrimp to hatch is about 79 to 82 Fahrenheit, though they will hatch down to about 70, but at a much, much slower rate. Typically, you'll expect to see them hatch from anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, though at lower temperatures, it can be a little bit longer. While most households are not kept warm enough to hatch brine shrimp without a heater inside the hatchery, in the store, we keep it very, very warm, and the water temperature sits at about 77 or 78 Fahrenheit, which gets us eggs hatched in about 24 hours. We are really happy with this, and therefore don't need to put a heater in. Though the great thing about this hatchery is it has a port in the top to allow you to put a heater directly inside without affecting the angle or the tight-fitting lid. If you followed all these steps and you're still struggling to hatch brine shrimp, I would recommend trying to add some baking soda to your hatchery at a dosage of one half teaspoon per liter of water. So for a hatchery like this, it would be one teaspoon. This will help increase your pH and KH, which will generally speaking, greatly increase the yield of brine shrimp. 
with a heavy majority of the brine shrimp now settled to the bottom after being unplugged for about half an hour, I'm now going to strain the brine shrimp through an aquatop brine shrimp net. We added a small expansion tube onto the bottom of our hatchery to make the draining process just a little bit simpler. But we can simply open the valve. And all those brine shrimp will flow at the bottom. While there is a small amount of eggs that will get trapped at the bottom, a heavy majority have flowed to the surface. After I've gotten most of the brine shrimp out, I will then turn the valve off to allow the rest of the brine shrimp to settle. I'm going to add a light at the bottom to draw the brine shrimp to the bottom of the container. I'm then going to rinse the brine shrimp with cool, clean water to rinse off any of the remaining salt before it gets fed out to our aquariums. We will then add the brine shrimp to some cool, clean, dechlorinated water. Allow to settle for a couple minutes, and then we'll feed to our fish. Live baby brine is one of our favorite fish to feed, especially to new fish that have just come in, as they always take to it very readily. With just a small pipette's worth, we can feed more than this entire tank. And as you can see, the tetras go crazy for it. This group here are Imperial Lapis Tetras, which get a beautiful blue iridescence and red coloration. A really unique little tetra. I really hope this video was very informative and that you enjoyed and are going to give hatching brine shrimp a try. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.